You're most welcome to today's talk. It's Monday the 1st of March. Um, some news from the UK and the United States and a few other countries to put things in context today. Now, moving on to the UK, first of all, cases are down 21.2% in the week. This is on seven days, but that still means there are 61,000 new cases in the week. So this is still a big issue, but it's going down. Hospitalizations, likewise, a horrendous number of people being hospitalized, 8,460, but down 22.1%. Tragic number of deaths, 2,270, but down by a third. And vaccine doses, of course, continue to rise over 20 million. Now for the first dose and the second dose, um, well over three quarters of a million. And it's always nice to look at it on the screen. We do see those number of cases going down. So downward trajectories in the UK. Now, um, some information on the Pfizer vaccine from the UK. I'm still a bit vague, not too hot on numbers yet. And, and frustratingly, the, the data on the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine seems to be taking ages to come through. But I, I suppose they want to make sure they're getting it right. Um, although there is data from Scotland that shows it's keeping people out of hospital in a very efficacious way. Anyway, um, in the over 80s, despite the large number of people, about 99, I think 98, 99 percent of the population of over 80s that have been vaccinated, there were still over 11,000 cases in the UK. So infections continued to decrease for four weeks after vaccination, then plateaued. Such an important point. The infections continued to decrease for four weeks. In other words, the efficacy of the vaccine kept increasing for four weeks. We have to to wait for this period of time after the vaccine has been given to get the efficacy. It doesn't happen straight away. It takes weeks to build up. Uh, lower rates of uh, admission among young, uh, amongst vaccinated at least 14 days after a single dose. So admissions to hospitals started going down after 14 days, but of course kept going up for a couple of weeks afterwards. So little effect after well, between between naught and 14 days, virtually no effect at all. Then they start to go down, then it builds up. But we have to wait for the effect to kick in. Vaccinated individuals who do become symptomatic, they have protection against death. Uh, this is with the Pfizer vaccine. People aren't getting so sick and people aren't dying as much. And we know that is also the case with the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine from the Scottish data. Now, I want to just show you a, a quick uh, picture here. Um, about the Pfizer vaccine in the um, in the over 70s. And again, this just reinforces the point, really. Now, this is not based on complete data sets because, of course, the over 70s were vaccinated after the over 80s. But 14 days here, basically no difference. And then the gap at 19 days. So th this line here is what would be expected without vaccination. This is the line of uh, with vaccination. But the point is, we see the gap increasing. And even at 24 days, the gap's still bigger after 29 days, still bigger after 34 days. So the, the point I really wanted to sort of reinforce there was that uh, th th this, this is taking time to build up. That's the main thing. And to put this into context, um, the SIREN study, which we've looked at quite a few times, Pfizer vaccine preventing infection, 72%. Much consistent with the Israeli data, it's 75%. And this is including symptomatic and asymptomatic infections. When you just look at symptomatic infections, 85% protection uh, after the first dose in the Israeli data. So good or good stuff. Uh, very pleasing. What is not so pleasing is the P1 variant is in the UK to some extent. The P1 variant, of course, uh, originally identified in Brazil, six cases in February, and we've lost one. So an unidentified person infected with the P1 variant, they took the test between the 12th or the 13th of February, uh, but we don't know where they are. Now, we're not sure whether they flew in. If they did fly in, they should be self-isolating, um, but if they didn't, they might not be self-isolating. So we've, we've lost one. No, no. This is partly the effect of the good genomic sequencing we have in the UK. But it also shows that all you need is a few cases to escape and you can have a real problem. And that's kind of potentially where we're at now. So, so if they flew into the UK, they should be self-isolating. Let's hope that's the case. Uh, because remember, if they were tested on the 12th or 13th, the hotel quarantine didn't start till the 
15th of February. Um, and it really is, that really was quite late considering what a big threat uh, this, this new variant is. And the thing with the uh, Brazilian variant uh, is uh, it may reduce vaccine efficacy. Um, it's slightly more transmissible, doesn't seem to make people sicker, but may reduce vaccine efficacy. Now, the vaccine manufacturers can tweak this. They can give us another vaccine in autumn or winter, but better to keep it out of the country altogether if we possibly can. And I'm also going to um, talk about the United States and the risk from new variants there as well. Now, again, the trends in the United States. Now, we did think this was artifactual to a degree, and there has been artifacts, but... I think it is true that the reduction in new cases in the United States has stopped. So have the cases plateaued out in the UK, in, in the United States, or is this just the residual effect we're seeing of uh, people on vacation, the bad weather, and some states that were delayed in reporting? It, it looks a bit more than that now. It looks like the rate of decline has plateaued in the, uh, in the United States, unfortunately. And while we're on the website, uh, we look at the hospitalizations in the States, which have gone down really quite nicely. Under 40,000 now hospitalized, down 16.9% on, uh, on, on the week. So that is, um, that, 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 that is encouraging downward trends, but has it, has it plateaued out? Are the new variants starting to become a factor? Now, I'll show you one of the reasons I'm worried about this. And this comes from uh, Ian's uh, night out uh, in Texas uh, last Saturday. Um, no comment required. Um, how on earth can you enjoy an environment where there's someone singing, fair enough, but four of the, those lurid screens as well just beats the heck out of me. But that's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about is the crowding here and... Um, it just seems actually unbelievable to me that this is a, a country undergoing a pandemic. And Ian assures me these were taken last Saturday. So there we go. Um, now, put those pictures together um, with the new variant. And I think uh, I think you can see the problems that we potentially have. So going on to the States here. No, we looked at the trends there, good. Hospitalizations are good. Vaccinations. Uh, the news is good. The news is good. 15% of people have had one vaccine. This is the whole population of the states getting on for 50 million. Two doses, 7.5% of the population. Good stuff. Excellent. Coming on well. Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, this is the Janssen. Janssen's the pharmaceutical division. Now, we notice this is AD26, so it's based on an adenovirus vector, which, of course, is the, the same way that the, the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine works. Um, and it's a single-dose vaccine. It's the only single-dose vaccine in use, which is great. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention approves third vaccine for over-18s, and, of course, that's the Janssen, Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So this is really, um, where have I gone? There we go. This is great to have this third vaccine in, in the repertoire. And this will really speed things up. Maybe not massively straight away, but it will speed things up. Food and Drug Administration, Saturday, authorised emergency use. Start shipping doses today, we believe, on Monday. 3.9 million doses this week. Now, that's pretty well all that's in storage. So we are waiting for them to manufacture more. 20 million doses by the end of March. Great things about this vaccine. Um, up to two years frozen at minus 20. That, that's kind of freezer temperatures, normal freezer temperatures. So it can be kept for up to two years. Absolutely fantastic. Up to three months at refrigeration temperatures. Brilliant. Phase three studies were 45,000 people. So the data is good. US agreed to pay Johnson & Johnson $1 billion for 100 million doses. And according to my maths, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's $10 a dose. So this is um, quite a bit cheaper. Now, I, I know the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is only about $3 a dose, but of course you need two of those. So that's $6 to vaccinate someone, whereas this is $10 to vaccinate someone. Um, not, not bad value at all from Janssen, Johnson & Johnson. 
and we believe that the deals negotiated by other countries are similar. European Union, 200 million doses, got the potential to transform the situation in Europe. COVAX, 500 million doses negotiated so far, hoping to produce 1 million doses in 2021. I mean, it's such good news. A single dose vaccine, refrigeration temperatures can go anywhere. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, November the 16th announced two dose trial. So they are trying out a two dose strategy as well. Um, interesting to see if, well, th that is, it, of course, it's likely to improve efficacy. It would be very surprising if it didn't. Um, but does the efficacy need to be improved is an interesting question. Now, um, oh, February, they started trialling on pregnant women as well. Um, so that that's also encouraging. Um, trials on pregnant women and children are starting for some vaccines and will need to be done. Now, US efficacy data can look weaker than the other vaccines. 85% efficacy protecting against severe cases. So it stops people getting very sick, 85%. 72% effective in preventing moderate illness. And, and some efficacy figures quoted are actually lower than this. Um, and this is putting people off. But 100% effective in preventing hospitalizations and deaths after one month. So far, after month after receiving this vaccine, no one has been hospitalized or died. Now, of course, it's going to take us another month after this injection is starting to being given tomorrow in the States, we believe it should start rolling out, actually going into arms on Tuesday. It's going to be another month before we know um, if this is uh, borne out by real world data. And of course, it's going to take longer than a month. Um, but so far, it's looking remarkably good. If I was not vaccinated, I would have this vaccine instantly. Um, it's it's uh, that 100% that is a good figure. Um, now, the Pfizer, the Moderna, and, and, and the, uh, the the Anson Johnson and Johnson in the states of the states, we can't really compare the numbers. So it's not like saying, "Well, my car's got so many horsepower, and your car's got so many horsepower," because these are all tested at different times, different variants, different levels of transmission. You know, the the, the direct transmissions, the, the direct relationships between transmission numbers don't really stack up. Um, but in the uh, Janssen, Johnson and Johnson trial, there were seven deaths in the trial and all in the placebo group. And uh, Sayed Omar, the Yale Institute of Global Health, the more severe the outcomes, the more similar the efficacy. So what he's saying is, um, OK, there might be some variation in how they prevent against uh, minor infection or subclinical infection even. But when you go into more moderate disease, more severe disease and preventing hospitalizations and deaths, all the vaccines are working really remarkably well. So even although, as we've said before, we might see increases in cases in the States, the number of deaths are going to carry on going down because the vaccines are going to break this link between cases and deaths, which as a healthcare worker is uh, what we hope for. We hope our patients do not get very sick and we hope they don't die. Now, consistent from that, this is from Chile. I just put this in out of interest. Uh, it's only one case, so we can't extrapolate too much. And to be quite honest, I had to use Google Translate. But, but I think I got the gist. Outbreak in elderly care facility in Chile. 40, 50, 51 people in the facility, 40 tested positive. No serious illness. Now, this is incredible. So this is 40 people who uh, high risk elderly people with comorbidities, no doubt, all got infected, no serious illness. This is really relegated, the, the vaccine here has really relegated the importance of the infection. Um, we want to get rid of it altogether, of course, but it, it's breaking that link between the infective numbers, which here were high, 40, serious illness and deaths, zero. And we know how devastating this virus has been in elderly care facilities in the past, tragically. And this was after the Sinovac. So just a quick look at the Sinovac. Chinese, of course. Um, it's called Coronavac. That's like the trade name of it. Efficacy, who knows? Uh, probably 50.3 to 91 percent, somewhere in that order. Uh, 
we don't really know the efficacy in preventing infection. But this does indicate it's very efficacious in preventing death, which of course is, is good. Now, we don't know how many infections it prevents. Um, we don't therefore know what level of transmission it will reduce. Two doses, two weeks apart, intramuscular injections, ordinary refrigeration, so that's good. We can move it around, no problem at all. And it's dead virus, it's inactivated virus. So what, what, what uh, the, the Sinovac people have done is they've done it the old fashioned way. They brewed up lots of viruses. Presumably they've attenuated them or imagine killed them, but they retain their molecular structure. Therefore, they remain antigenic. Therefore, they generate an immune response. And why don't I know the efficacy figures? Because they're yet to publish. They have not even yet published in preprint. But I think we have to assume there's quite a lot of data out there. And the reason we have to, I think we have to assume that is Indonesia authorised it on the 11th of January, Turkey authorised it on the 13th of January, Brazil on the 17th of January. So these are countries with massive populations, are happy to use it, authorised. I think they must be getting data that is not in the public domain and they're going to produce a billion doses per year. And I must say, when I first heard about this vaccine, I really quite liked the idea because... Uh, the older you get, the harder it is to change. Now, I, I, I know these um, the, 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 these uh, adenovirus vectors and the messenger ribonucleic acid uh, vaccines are wonderful. I'm not mocking it at all. But vaccines basically used to be the dead or attenuated form of the organism. And that's what they went for in China. So that was always very likely to work with this uh, Sinovac one anyway. It was always very likely to work and because it's injecting the whole virus, I think it's likely to generate a very polyclonal response. You'll make uh, antibodies and sensitized T cells to a, a wide number of epitopes on, on the virus. That, that's the parts of the virus that the immune system recognizes being foreign because you're chucking in basically the whole, the whole dead virus. So that does seem to be working. Frustrating we haven't got a publication though. Re I really wish they would do it the same as we do. So, so that we know where we know where we are at with that. India um, starting to vaccinate people above 60 now, people above 45 with certain medical conditions. And uh, president 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 of India? Let me think. President, I think is it president? I think it's president. Anyway, the the the, uh, the senior politician in India, Modi. President Mo I think it's not president, is it? Anyway. Sorry, slip of the slip of the memory there. Um, anyway, he's accepted the vaccine, but he's accepted it in uh, at the right time. What I am applauding him for is not jumping the queue, uh, as other politicians in some parts of the world have. What I am concerned about is is reports in India that the vaccine is being sold. I'm not going to dwell on that because I haven't got a firm reference on it. Um, but that that would be concerning. But I'm delighted to see that uh, that Mr Modi has just accepted it with his age group, didn't jump the gun, but has accepted it. Now, um, a concern here, um, and there's been a concern for a while, really. Um, it's it's kind of seesawed a lot. The Czech Republic moving on to Europe now, uh, Czechia. Um, well, the graph speaks for itself, doesn't it? Uh, dramatic increase in cases. The information I'm getting from Chechia is saying that basically people aren't playing the game, that they're not following the, the rules. Um, anecdotally, uh, there, there's a lot of people not following the rules and uh, we see it's now the highest increase in cases uh, in the world. Um, just shows there's no substitute for most of the people obeying the rules most of the time. And those people in Texas that we looked at on those photographs, there will be a price to pay for that. Until this pandemic is over, there will be a price to pay for that, especially with the new variants. Uh, so world's worst surge in COVID-19, much, much stricter uh, enforcements now, enforced by police and military now. So... Um, Pity that that level of enforcement is necessary. Uh, Belgium, um, government wants to reset its vaccination programme because it's basically been a bit of a disaster. People over 55 could be offered the AstraZeneca vaccine. Now, um, I think we did say this about a month ago on this channel. It's not, you know, I'm, I've no, I'm not getting any gratification out of this. I'm just sorry that so many people in Belgium are 
will have died as a result of this strategy. Because remember, in Scotland, overall, 81% reduction in hospital admissions in the over 80s. So that was in people 80 plus. That was with both vaccines, but it was good with the Pfizer and with the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. We have the real world data now and Belgium, Germany, France, Poland and Italy all went this way. Really quite hard to explain. Why didn't they realise that giving the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, even if they think the efficacy is not where they'd like it to be in the over 65s, for which there was no negative evidence, there just wasn't enough evidence to support it. Why didn't they realise it would keep people out of hospital? I mean, these are regulatory authorities at the national and international level. And yet they seem to make such simple mistakes. Right, simple prediction now. Uh, Belgium will authorise this for use in the over 65s and over 65s and in all age groups, I am sure. Tragic that it's taken so long. It really is tragic. Hospital admissions up 44% in the week. More people are going to die because they got that wrong. And, um, and I know the European Medicines Agency are reconsidering this, but they haven't done it yet. You know, every day that's delayed, people are dying who don't need to. And it's and, and it's tragic. The, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is not being taken up in Europe as we would like it to be. And uh, and yet it's it's just they're waiting to save lives. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like it's like you're walking past a harbour and you walk past one of these rings that you throw in if people are drowning and people are drowning and you don't bother throwing it in. It, it's... I really struggle to understand it and I really hope they change their mind soon and that this doesn't become a loss of face or a political issue as it may well have done already. Um, vaccinated. Belgium have vaccinated 7%, the UK 31%. Europe's 27 member states, the average is 7.26%. I mean, this is just a major indictment on European organization or lack of it yeah it's what do you think of European organization I think it would be a good idea uh, in terms of vaccine anyway European Commission separate matter actually a proposed EU wide digital COVID-19 vaccine passport this will come it will have to this is going to come like it or not it's going to come Allows Europeans to travel more freely over summer. It's called a digital green pass. That will happen. That's being proposed as we speak. So there, there we go. Now, the, the thing I get most negative uh, comments about are um, these, uh, the, these um, electronic passports for people that have been vaccinated and have the infection. And the other thing I get massive amounts of negative comments on are the... Um, um, I, I did a video called um, post-vaccination deaths and I think the people that are clicking on that okay it's probably a stupid thing to call it <clears throat> what I should have called it is post-vaccination deaths are, are are not greatly elevated against uh, normal background deaths but um, if you read that video um, if you read the comments on that video I really wouldn't let your children read the comments on it the, the amount of negativity I'm getting from saying that these vaccines do not appear to be killing people at a, you know, a higher rate than they would be dying anyway. So they're the two things people don't like, but I'll just carry on reporting the data as I see it and uh, trying to explain a bit of science as we go along. Um, but uh, don't let your children read the comments on that video. It's just that, that some aren't appropriate. Um, I, I, I don't delete comments unless they're positively dangerous, but... Um, but it's just, it's just sad that so many people have nothing better to do, to be quite honest, or or have, have are so reluctant to be led by the data. Follow the evidence wherever it leads is, is the motto. OK, I tend to ramble when I have nothing else to say, so I'm going to stop now. Thank you for watching, of course. Always great to have you. Always feels good to communicate.